everyone. I'm Aishwarya. Namaskara. Nanu Monika. And we are from Conscious Bengaluru. We are hosting a series of dialogues with practicing conscious designers, much like Rachel and Amawi, Phyllis, in the pursuit of continuity and inclusion within the conscious design community. Welcome, Amawi and Rachel. It's so nice to have you here. Hi. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Likewise. So uh, let's start with your own journeys, um, the what, why, and how of you came to be CCD Fellows, and what specific aspects of your lived experience, um, professional work, and education led you to start Conscious Accra? Well, I'll take that one first, and uh, probably much like Rachel, you know, we're we're accidental urbanists, we better say that right off the bat, you know, so this wasn't intended to be the journey that I set out on professionally. I've been doing other things relating to law, to academia. Um, however, I came to this by way of uh, being involved um, early on in my career um, in work that had to do around children and space in Accra. And so that piqued my interest. And in any case, I had already been very fortunate to grow up in the city uh, of Accra in a way that combined urban and traditional living in very interesting ways. So I think I sort of had a sensitivity to that. But fast forward, I work for an organization called Mofra Foundation in Ghana that um, is concerned about children's cultural enrichment and, and, and place making that centers children in urban Ghana. And so through that, I got to know uh, several very interesting people in uh, the global space around placemaking and play, which is really coming up about maybe 10 years ago or so. And so I met Itai Balti uh, then, and uh, we had a couple of great conversations. You know, we were very interested in what, you know, each was doing. And uh, then last year, he asked me if we would be interested in, you know, being fellows and doing, you know, a conscious Accra event. So that's sort of the short <laughs> version of how, you know, we came to be fellows. And of course, you know, once I had been working with Rachel on some of these things on and off for a while, you know, so I gave her a call and we decided that we would try, even though in 2020, of course, you know, we, neither of us right. was in Accra, <laughs> right. but we still, you know, managed to do it. Yeah. Yes, I definitely agree. It was a very sort of unexpected, but happy sequence of events that led us into the Center for Conscious Design and into this fellowship. Um, I similarly hadn't been conceiving of the work that we were doing necessarily as conscious design or within that framework. Um, our focus was very much on public space design, public space in Accra, and specifically focusing on designing with the child's eye lens. So how do we ensure that spaces are actually accessible to children? How do we ensure that they are playful? How do we ensure that they encourage learning, even in the outdoor environment? Like understanding that learning does not begin and end in the classroom, but that it is a total experience uh, in every space that the child inhabits. And realizing that when you take that approach to designing for the child, it makes everything better, more comfortable, easier to access and more fun for the adults in their lives as well. So it's actually a really important principle of design to apply, not just in the playground or at schools, but everywhere. But yes, we absolutely were not thinking, you know, oh yes, this definitely meets, you know, points one, two, and three of the conscious design framework until Itai invited us to participate in the festival last year. And so when we took a step back and you know, we'd received this invitation and thought, okay, so how, does our work fit within the mission of this center, with the goals of this festival, what we're trying to communicate? 
and really realize that actually, yes, the sort of holistic nature of this work, the idea that we're focusing on the full spectrum of people throughout life at different age points, that we're focusing on the importance of nature and biodiversity in the urban environment, and that that is, you know, a critical element of urban design, that culture and heritage and tradition and how those things are embodied in, you know, modern landscapes and modern design, especially in the West African context, are also really essential principles that cannot be omitted. So we designed our sessions last year around those principles. We spoke about play in Accra and in other African cities. We spoke about cultural heritage and how that shapes places in the city. We spoke about whether or not Accra is green or can be considered green and what we might do to make that more likely. And we spoke about our own space that we have had the privilege to experiment with over the last 10 years. And I think it was a really wonderful experience for us to get the chance to actually kind of reconceptualize our work, given some of these new and really interesting frameworks that help us to link it to other practices happening all around the world. Yeah, just to add a bit to that, Rachel, that, Rachel, do you remember that we wrote an article called Designing Cities with Children in Mind <laughs> together? Yeah, yes, years ago. <laughs> a long time ago, <laughs> years ago, we did. So that was the sort of beginning of um, our, our, our journey together, if you like. But yes, you know, we ourselves learned so much last year and it was quite amazing how many of the people who we invited to come on and share their own work and journeys actually used, you know, this word consciousness, you know, one organization was called Echo Conscious Citizens, which is a new organization in Ghana. Um, another person, you know, talked a lot about just raising green consciousness and whether we had consciousness in the city. So the word conscious um, in the context of this festival and e e events turns out to be really central for a lot of people. Yes, thank you so much uh, for sharing your journey with us. Um, we ourselves have learned so much from everything that we did last year and watching um, your, your events have been really instrumental for us to think about uh, what we're doing this year as well. And um, taking that forward, uh, I'd like to ask you, what is conscious design to you? Um, I will take that one to start. When I think about conscious design, and again, you know, this is something that I really began thinking about in more seriousness only last year when we started to participate in this event, in this program. But I think of conscious design as holistic. I think of it as a design practice that truly takes many dimensions of a problem or a design challenge into account. Design that does not focus simply on one objective within a project, but actually expands to consider many other use cases, many other people, how environments, how land, um, how culture and tradition are impacted by our design choices. And, you know, unfortunately, I think some of my consciousness around what this means has come from the fact that Accra as a city has not been designed necessarily in that way. There are many spaces that you know, are created for cost efficiency or created to move large numbers of vehicles in a short amount of time or, you know, created to cater to economic interests over human interests in a lot of ways. You know, we see that in the massive reduction of the green canopy of the city to make way for roads and buildings without remediation. We see it in the lack of designated public spaces that we have available to us. We see it in uh, it being very difficult for people to find ways to gather that do not require economic outlay. 
because many of the places where people go may end up being a mall or a shopping center. Like those are spaces that are given to us in public. Like those are a lot of the third places that we have access to. Uh, so unfortunately, some of my consciousness has come in contrasting how I believe the design process should unfold with how I'm seeing it unfold in our city. And a lot of what motivates me is the idea that we still have an opportunity to intervene with that and to change some of the principles of design in the city moving forward, but that it is, you know, it's a limited window where we will be able to make that impact before certain things go so far that it becomes hard to undo. Uh, so that is what challenges me and also excites me about that work. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, I think it's really important for the inhabitants of the city to believe that the city belongs to them and that they belong to the city. It's, it's, it's really, really important. And that belief has to be demonstrated and reinforced in millions of small and large ways, I mean, every day. Um, so for me, you know, the idea of conscious design has to do with acts and interventions and even restraints, right? Not acting, right? That um, help that process along. Um, and I mean, childhood is, is probably the best time uh, to begin to develop, you know, those, those experiences. So like Rachel, you know, I worry sometimes that um, the way in which Accra and some of the other cities in Ghana are developing, I mean, uh, sort of turn the city against itself in a way, you know. Um, so what we have been very fortunate to be able to do is to actually have a small physical space where we could walk into every day and be surrounded by, by trees and actually be able to put into practice, you know, some of our notions of, of you know, what design should mean and then see those experiments as it were, you know, being tested because children would come into the space and then being able to take some of the learnings from that space and extend them into other parts of the city. Yeah, it's fascinating because uh, what I loved about what Rachel said was the fact that it's a holistic approach. Yes, and from what Amawi, you said, it seems like it's a holistic approach to negotiating between the agency of people and their attachment with the city, right. which is, and all the actions that can be collectively inspired or taken by the government and by people and hopefully together in the long term to bring things together in a holistic way. It's lovely. And I think that definitely shown through a lot of the events that came out of our conscious Accra last year. And um, even in the ecosystems that you have created locally, the fact that it's about is Accra green? Is Accra conscious? Is Accra? So many questions, but all of them were actually approached from a very holistic point of view that nature was always there. People were always there. Agency of people were all, was always in question. And yeah, it really came through. I have a question in connection to how you as individuals, as practitioners, urban, accidental urban practitioners, as you call yourselves, <laughs> How do you connect your core philosophical beliefs in life to your engagement with the conscious design community? And what is it that you in your bones value from this engagement that you get from the community, from the global network? And what do you think is sustainable over long term? Ooh. So that's a very big question. I mean, I don't know that individually I, <laughs> I um. I can, I, can, I, I can say that, you know, I have, I have a core philosophy per se, but I just would say that um, just doing this, doing this work has required consciousness, observation, um, reaching out into the world to see what else is happening everywhere but 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 for me particularly in the global south you know so when i i, I see things have happening in you know um um 
in cities in, in India, you know, in some of the uh, cities in Latin America, around Africa also. Um, one of the things that motivates me is that I believe there, there is an African story to tell, right? That we have experiences that um, ought to be shared, right? In um, globally, you know, and, and, and in the past, it seemed as though sometimes, you know, there are um, certain spaces in which we're not there as, 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 as much as we could be. You know, so, so part of this has been, okay, how do we engage with the rest of the world, you know, um, and particularly how do we engage around the African continent itself, which we should remember is, is urbanizing really fast and is the world's youngest continent. So the fact of the matter is that most of the young people in the world are going to be in African cities. And that's a future that is virtually here you know so for that reason i think it's terribly important that the work that we do you know is recorded and that the experiences are observed and that there's you know maybe a, a, a very robust apparatus for sharing you know and and and, and exchange yeah Absolutely. Um, when it comes to core philosophical beliefs, uh, you know, I'm sure that the pandemic has given us all ample time for existential <laughs> reflection on what exactly those things are. Um, but something that I keep coming back to when thinking about the work I do uh, in many different areas is the idea of regenerative design. Um, I'm a very firm believer in economies and structures and communities that are designed in such a way that they actually give more energy or they put out more resources than they consume. Because I think that for a very long time, you know, our economic models have been built on extraction and exploitation. Uh, the way that we we build or do anything entails, you know, a great deal of resource waste. It entails a great deal of waste of the cognitive, mental, emotional resources of individuals who are in these systems. And so my vision has always been, you know, when it comes to anything, when we think about food, when we think about the buildings we live in, when we think about the spaces where we connect, how do we design those things so that they are replenishing us, they are replenishing the land, they are replenishing the environment instead of depleting. And that is really kind of a core principle that I'm trying to embody in the work that I do and in the way that I live outside of work as well. And I think that that connects perfectly with the principles of conscious design, because in order to design in a regenerative way, you need to be cognizant of how what you're doing is impacting systems around you. How does your decision to place a building here affect the people who will live in it, those who will live next door, the waterway that used to run through there, the plants that live on the land, the animals who used to live there? What does it going to mean in terms of your consumption of energy? All of those things must be taken into account. And I consider that to absolutely be within the conscious design framework. In terms of ways that that is challenged, I think that uh, working and living in and coming from the global South, we do definitely experience pushback Sometimes when it comes to implementing conscious design principles or regenerative design principles, because we are obviously in a situation of shocking inequality, especially economically. And there is now a dynamic that has emerged globally where economies that have for hundreds of years become wealthy on the back of horrifying extractive and exploitative practices are now turning around to say, do you know what? We've realized that these practices are actually harmful to people and the environment and everybody must stop immediately. Meanwhile, economies that are emerging at last into 
you know, heightened economic production into heightened manufacturing, expanding their economies in different ways, are turning back and saying, you know, it is not reasonable for you to have extracted all of the resources from these practices and then to turn around and say that nobody else can. And of course, you know, the fundamental principle is the same. Whoever it was who did the exploiting, we are now in a critical situation and cities in the global south are especially vulnerable to, you know, the changes of climate and to the issues that can come with large urbanizing populations. Like our cities are going to bear the brunt. And yet we are also being asked to make the sacrifices to stem the tide of consequences that were set in motion by other people. And so I think that makes it quite difficult sometimes when you, know, you have projects in mind that are regenerative, but they go against the conventional wisdom of what it means to design a building, what it means to open a business. And you know, people can have a hard time adjusting or seeing the value in those projects and say, you know, yes, we, we do buy in. We see how this can be both profitable and positive for people and for the environment. So I think that, that it can be an uphill battle in some ways, but I think I do also feel hopeful at the fact that um, our cities are also so young and filled with young and imaginative people and people who will be more open to experimentation, to figuring out new ways of doing things because they've seen that the old ways don't work. And so that, that does give me hope. Hmm. Yes, I mean, the idea of conventional wisdom too, if we think about it, so much of that comes from what people have internalized from outside you know, and so, you know, for me, one of the challenges has been to try to figure out ways in which people in places like Ghana can remember <laughs> that they've actually had really wonderful um, traditions and principles and practices that can be adapted to urban living instead of seeing the city as this very sort of separate place from where they quote unquote originally come from, you know? So this idea that you come to the city to whatever, to hustle, you know, to make money, whatever it is, and you leave, you know, some of those really wonderful, workable, you know, principles in the rural or traditional context, uh, is you want to try and see how you can merge those, you know, in ways that work for the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's been quite a challenge to have people come in and they want, you know, a cement block building with everything paved mm -hmm. over because that represents progress or, you know, represents to them, you know, modernity when in fact it does not. Um, so anyway, you know, if, if when we come to talk about who's doing work around, you know, Africa that I find extremely inspiring, you know, that um, I think can, can um, really be, you know, be shared in ways that this, this, this issue of reinforcing, I think, has to do with seeing something work even in, an, in another place that's similar to you. Okay. Yeah. And though it doesn't seem out of reach, it's oh, okay, we can do this because it was done in Johannesburg or, you know, Dakar or, you know, Kigali. Um, so those have been some of the, the good ways in which we think that we've actually built sustainability, you know, mm -hmm. by, by being engaged in, in each other's work. Yeah, it's really powerful, isn't it? Because one is about remembering where you're from and what worked, what worked here and back, th back then. But the other one is more about if we are looking at our neighbors or um, neighbors a few streets down the road, what can we learn from them? What is it that they're doing which is working for them? But how can we mindfully and consciously learn as opposed to just like saying that it works there, maybe it'll definitely work here as well. Or their house looks beautiful and fancy, so maybe I should build it um, in my backyard too. Yeah. And it's really nice because I think, uh, as you rightly pointed out, that cities from the global south that are now emerging 
who have actually been vulnerable to the after effects of years of um, yeah practices that have actually depleted nature culture in so many ways we are the ones who have to actually think about this a lot a lot more and yeah. it's happening so well the next question is more along the lines of how you guys uh, sort of relate to this year's theme which you already have because everything is already about conscious design principles but principles are also lenses right at the end of the day we are not trying to create another manifesto nah we are trying to just figure out what can we learn from each other and what can we take forward into our own lives so there's a newest neighbor in um, the conscious cities network especially from africa the slagos so uh, the question is uh, if you had to think about the person space continuum in accra and then quickly turn over to lagos and be like hmm what's happening there what would be your first thoughts i think um looking at this idea of the person space continuum particularly you had shared um prompts about the truly the the continuity and the shared consciousness of individuals and the objects and spaces around them and i think that one way i look at it i mean quite literally in terms of shared consciousness and symbiotic relationships between people and their environment is thinking about how people emotionally and physiologically respond to green space actually when we were thinking about this question we went back to uh, the mofa foundation space that again we have had the privilege to work on for the last 10 years and what makes it distinct from other spaces in accra is the way that it has retained its green character so when you step through the gate and onto this property you have these massive trees that have been here for decades you have greenery you have birds that used to live on the accra flood plain who still frequent this area because they have an environment that is actually conducive to their ability to thrive um you have playful design elements so you have elements that call from architecture from other regions of Ghana you know even down to our bathroom it was designed by a muralist who used principles from traditional architecture and traditional decoration so it feels extremely different from the city around it because it retains many of the things that the city around it has abandoned or neglected to consider in its design and when people step into that space you know there is a very literal release that occurs there is you know the depth of the inhalation and exhalation there is the relief of stress there is the joy of looking around and seeing something that is so different uh, there is the coolness of being able to be under a tree a cry is very hot and there is a relief that comes with stepping into a place where suddenly there is a breeze and there is shade you know your body's physiological stress responses literally begin to relax and the emotional response that comes along with that is very powerful the idea that you are feeling less stressed you're feeling more open your attitude is one of discovery you're more willing to engage with your environment and with the people around you because you are not focused on you know getting out of an uncomfortable situation as fast as possible or getting from point a to point b as fast as possible and watching that and like the the energetic relationship between people and that space again has made me think of how powerful it is to model that within the city in other places because imagine what it would be like if you had a city that was literally designed to put people into you know a parasympathetic state of relaxation when they moved around in it rather than in a heightened state of tension you know you're almost in fight or flight mode every time you step out the door because it's the traffic is terrible the heat is terrible the noise is overwhelming you know i don't know how other people are going to react to me and so i am defensive as i move about my day i'm quick to anger as i move about my day and how does that impact the way that you know citizens are able to collaborate or connect or ideate together it's hard to do those things when you are just defending your basic survival and basic comfort needs 
So, you know, for me, the personal space continuum, it's absolutely about how do we design environments that have a really positive feedback loop for us as well as individuals and that impact our capacity, our literal physical and mental and emotional capacity to collaborate, to connect with one another, to build and create new things. Um, I think that the built and natural environment is incredibly powerful in influencing that capacity for us. And so I would love to see how, especially again in our global southern cities, how we can make that more possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's definitely the place that we all aspire to be, I think, even uh, in, in, in our cities and in, in everything that we do here. Um, finally, we have uh, a question for you as DCD Fellows. What aspirations do you have uh, for, for future events and dialogues at the CCD? And um, what do you hope to share with you know, other fellows and other city chapters um, that you are in connection with? at the moment? Hmm. So um, we, we found that it was very satisfying in the 2020 um, festival for us to um, highlight and surface the work of people who are doing wonderful things in the city in many different spaces, but who would not have a platform like this you know, not ordinarily, you know, so we just wanted the voices that um, aren't heard enough, you know, or, or haven't been heard at all. Some of them are very quiet, but very impactful and powerful. So, I, you know, I, I, I'm recalling from last year, you know, a lady who has, has, has um, put up about six or seven wonderful libraries in and around the city of Accra and you wouldn't know her name <laughs> okay so we reached out to people like that who are doing things you know where we, we just don't think that um, they're getting in, uh, enough attention so I would like to continue more or less along the same vein of you know we're conscious Accra but we're very sensitive to our um uh, to, to, to what's happening across the continent. So you're talking about Lagos. We're very happy to hear that Lagos is coming, you know, on, online. And we really hope that there's a vigorous sort of local, you know, because, I mean, Lagos, that's, <laughs> if you're talking about energy, <laughs> you know, and vigor in you know, around the world or in Africa, I mean, Lagos is, is one of the best, you know, um, Google Arts and Culture has has something up called Echo for Show, which is about Lagos. And I mean, go there, it's so vibrant. And there's just so much there. So we're happy to hear that. But, you know, it's great to, um, to be able to, 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 to bring those in, to have dialogues across the continent, but also with, with, with secondary cities in Ghana. Um, so we would like to be able to do more of that. I mean, there is one um, uh, secondary city in the north of Ghana, for example, where um, there's a gentleman called Ibrahim Mahama, you know, who has just put up this, you know, extraordinary art space um, and sort of an outdoor museum where he's got these old aeroplanes and there are school children coming through and going into the sort of world-class art gallery. And to have that kind of an experience for an African child in a small city and to know that, you know, when it comes to this, I am actually the center of the world. It, I mean, there's nothing that beats that, you know. So it's, I, I get, just get excited by this and by having our radar out for people who are doing these kinds of things and to use the Conscious Accra platform to say, just come, come and let's showcase you. Let's talk about what you're doing, you know. So I really would like to see that spread um, uh, a little bit more in our future events. Rachel, what do you think? 
<laughs> you know, it's like you have said it all, everything that you are saying. I was just wanting to applaud, like, yes, I love everything you're talking about. Um, I think I would just add to that the, the experience of creating the Conscious Accra events for the first time last year. I think it was very beneficial to us in terms of building and strengthening our own local networks. So, you know, we have gotten to reach out again to practitioners who maybe we didn't know very well, but we'd heard of their work and we got to reach out and say, you know, we are engaged in this festival. We have this opportunity to showcase what we're doing. We really admire your work. Come and let's talk about it and to strengthen our own local relationships, our own local communities of practice through this global event, which is very powerful. So I would love to see more of that. Um, and at, you know, varying levels of locality. So first talking about within Accra itself, how is our community strengthened? And then within Ghana and creating these hub and spoke networks with the secondary cities, what does that look like? Within West Africa, so regionally with our neighbors, how are we in conversation? How are we learning from one another? Across the continent, is there an intra-African community of learning, showcasing, teaching, that we can contribute to. And then on the global stage, do we have a platform that ends up being a very equitable exchange of information, teaching and learning? Because very often when it comes to international design communities, there's this sense that all design emerges from one particular place in the West. And those you know, principles are then disseminated to the rest of the world. And the rest of the world is to adopt you know, those core values or core principles. And I appreciate it very deeply, but, you know, design does not begin and end in Scandinavia. There are obviously other places in the world that are doing really powerful things. And I think it's very important. And what I hope that we will be able to do within the CCD is you know, to have a platform where it is truly a peer learning exchange. This is not about one person has more to teach and one has more to learn, everybody is a practitioner and is a teacher and every place has a lot to learn from uh, you know, our closest neighbors and our furthest neighbors. So I am very excited to see how that can take shape. I'm also very keen to learn that Lagos is on board. I would love to see how other African cities come online and what collaborations and conversations might emerge from that. Splendid. Splendid indeed. Yeah, I want to clap every time I'm always spoke to and you, Rachel. Yeah, that's that's exactly. the tessellations of scale in terms of social scale and also geographical scale. That in itself is so wonderful. And if as a platform the CCD can um, have that or facilitate that, it would be wonderful. And um, I love what you said about the design principles because this year uh, the fact that it was just for us, a bunch of little girls, not little girls, I would say, just a bunch of girls from Bangalore. Uh, uh, we, we were not thinking about design in any way. We literally looked in our backyard. We, we, we thought about what, what is India? What is Bharat? What is Bangalore? And the minute we thought about all these places, diversity came to mind. And everyone thinks about colors, vibrance, brilliance and whatnot and we're like hmm yeah that's exactly what it is and inclusivity is not for, far from that i mean inclusivity can only happen when there's diversity and going from all of those perspectives that's when we thought about the principles and the principles were just a way to sort of yeah provide a lens and so the theme this year was not more about telling people what to do but it was just like understanding what each city has to offer in relation to a lens and then then letting the theme emerge on its own because a person space continuum, well, it, it exists everywhere and it needs to be interpreted, it needs action, it needs reaction, it needs thought and everything else. And that's what the festival will hopefully celebrate and looking forward to seeing you guys there and uh, yeah, and to all the aspirations, hope we can make it work. Oh. Absolutely. And thank you for coming up with these wonderful words, you know, empathy and equity and an activism, which you'll have to explain to me a little bit more. But <laughs> <laughs>
it's uh, just, you know, I, I go around, I have those in my brain, you know, and when I'm going around just looking at things, it's a, it's a really great, you know, little sort of interpretive tool. So thank you for it. <laughs> it's exactly everything that you're doing. It's exactly what all of us have been thinking about and it's just words. And sometimes yeah. words just put things into perspective and nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. We're, yeah. we're looking oh, forward to it very much. Take yeah. care. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so All much right. for joining Bye. us.